Steve, what are we doing? Well, it's time to put the rear end in the 68 Dodge Dart. This Dart is called the Slanter because it runs a Slant 6, but not just any Slant 6, a highly modified Torx Storm Supercharged Slant 6, which, uh, depending on the pulley, it makes 330 horsepower with the small pulley, and it can go up from there, but I believe we had the gasket on the dyno, so I don't know what the limitations are. But anyway, we are not doing the engine right now. I've got an eight and three quarter rear end right there. They came out of the Barbecuta, which is my 68 Barracuda that unfortunately got fried in the California wildfires a few years ago. It's only good for a body for a drag car, but it's giving up its rear end. 410 gears, it's got an Auburn cone clutch rear grip. It's got Mosier axles. I've got 11 inch B-body style brakes on it now, but I may change that to a disc brake setup in the interest of lighter weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, what'd you spray the rear end with? I sprayed the rear end with acrylic enamel because I really just like spraying that and it came out looking really good. I used a basically the same product in a semi-gloss for the leaf springs. You might notice it's got offset spring hangers front and back, which meant that spring perches are relocated on the axle housing. That's going to give me some more fender, <laughs> give me some more tire clearance to the leaf spring, allowing me to use more of the inner fender clearance and on the outside, I rolled the fender lip for even more. Altogether, it's about an inch and a half, so that's significant. I've got little tires on there right now, but I'm going to figure out how big is big and what's going to hit and use the space yeah. best, best I can. You might notice also that the whole under chassis of the car has been cleaned up super nice. I've got a new gas tank from AMD installed. I restored all the hangers and stuff like that. So I wanted it super nice and clean underneath. The front suspension is fully detailed, but that installation is gonna have to wait for another day. It's got a little bit of rust on the outside, but for now, I'm just gonna concentrate on the chassis and drivetrain. I've got a brand new interior on order and that's gonna take about 12 weeks. And then maybe, maybe after I get tired of driving it, I might have checked the paint the body and let that cook for a couple of years until I can get perfection. No, I'm not going to let it cook too long. <laughs> I'm going to paint. So that's all there is to it. Sweet. Let's get to it. Okay, the rear end's in position. Now, the thing is the spring perch has a hole in it. It's got to line up with the center bolt of the leaf spring, which sets the exact position. Sometimes there's a little bit of flex in and out on the leaf spring, and you might have to do a little bit of wedging to get the good one drop. But it's in. I restored all the hardware. I've got the shock plates. Now, originally this car with seven and a quarter had a, a two and a half inch or yeah, I think it's a two and a half inch axle tube. So it's a different size U-bolt and shock plate. So I've got this stuff off the of B-body and I'm actually just temporarily using shock plates because I'm gonna go with the traction device, either Caltrax or slapper bars. So I'll put them on. Here's a little tech tip, especially when you're using used U-bolts. Sometimes they splay out and they're a little bit wider than they were stock and you have a hard time getting them to go through the hole. These are pretty close. I can just squeeze them with my hand and they go in, but sometimes you have to actually put them in a vise, flex them inward, and then it'll spring back out some until you get the exact bolt spread for the install. These will go right on though, so install. Now they're a little long.
We need a couple of, I want to put rags on the jack stands though. And I'll lower this on here. I've got the rear end mounted up in the car and really I just consider this a test fit and a look-see and I'm looking at a few things that actually represent a puzzle. Now these wheels are only sevens and the tires are actually quite narrow and they're a little outboard of where I'd like it. If I put a nine inch wheel all of the additional width would have to go to the inside of the car. I've got like two inches out there and I'm pretty tight on this side right here. So a simple solution would be to find a wheel with those kinds of specifications and a lot of backspace. But I just like the deep dish look. You know, it's kind of the aesthetic that I appreciate. That's the way wheels look back in the day. So I think ultimately I might have to undo what you just saw done here and either get this rear axle housing narrowed, which I probably won't because it's an A body housing, just kind of hard to find and desirable I can get a truck housing or some other piece of garbage because I've got to do this purchase and get it narrowed and custom access shafts and all of that so I had a look got a few things to think about but at least I can roll this thing around now continue work on the car while I ponder the solution to my wheel and tire dilemma it's not gonna be too hard to solve I guarantee you that check it out Steve Dulcich on Instagram if you want to keep up with little updates on the car. I'm just kind of piecing this away as a personal project and this car was my daily driver for quite a while. I'd like to have it road ready so when I when all my other cars are broken down or not registered or insurance canceled, I can at least have my black slanter dart ready to work and that has happened in the past.